Hi everyone, welcome to the QA Ops channel. I'm Rafael Lima, and in this video, we will continue where we stopped in the last video. So, if you haven't watched the last video, I'm going to post a link uh, on the description so you can you can watch it. Uh, and we we finalized creating the project and creating a test that didn't do much. Uh, and now we're going to keep up with the project and include the rest assure in the first tests. So I, I'm going to download the project from scratch. Uh, here's the repository link, and I'm going to do a git clone on that. And now I have my project, right? And if I go through the branches, uh, I have a few branches here. So if I do git branch dash r for remote, I'm going to see all the remote branches. Since I'm doing this video both in English and in Portuguese, I'm putting the 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 language on the beginning of the on the prefix of the branch name. Mm -hmm. So the last project we use mm -hmm. uh, the initial project. So, and the master is always going to be the head of that, right? So I'm going to get the master. I'm going to do git branch English, git, sorry, git checkout English master. Right. So if I do now Gradle, tasks and it's going to fail because I don't have the greater wrapper. So if I look at here my project, I have a greater W which is the wrapper script, uh, but it needs the jar file and it makes usually makes no sense for you to commit to push to the version control a jar file because the jar can be generated. And that's what we're going to do. We need to have the greater installed, right? Uh, and with the Gradle already installed, I can do Gradle wrapper. And it's going to create my Gradle wrapper, which is a jar file inside Gradle slash wrapper. Then now I have a Gradle wrapper and now my tasks can run, right? And now I can do two uh, tests and it's going to run my test. So in, in this is going to make sure that it's going to install the proper, uh, so when you use the Gradle wrapper, you need, initially you need to have a Gradle installed. But then once you have the Gradle installed, if I get a new project, they uses a different versions of, of version of Gradle. Uh, and when I do Gradle W to run that project, it's going to make sure I have the correct version of Gradle to run that specific project. So going to the IntelliJ here, and open the project. It's recognizing everything I have. Uh, I'm going to enable import. And it's going to process here a bunch of stuff. It recognizes, and now I have my test here up to run and recognize everything. Cool. So that's how you can. Uh, get the project and set up your IntelliJ from scratch. So now, before we dive into the actual uh, testing research, let's see what we're going to test, right? So this is a website that I found that has a uh, API for you to test. And we're going to, it's a very simple uh, di uh, aesthetic uh, JSON, right? You can do create, you can do a bunch of stuff. But then when you create, it doesn't actually create the user or, or that content. It's going to just uh, display a static a JSON. So if I create and try to uh, list, it's not going to list the user that I create. But then that ha helped me out for this uh, starter video. So I don't have to figure out, uh, or I don't have to create the API right, for us to test. So this is it's, it's very good for us in the beginning. And so the first thing that we need to do is to install the dependencies of Gradle, right? Sorry, the dependence of Rest Assured. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to here into my DuckDuckGo and I'm going to say Rest Assure Gradle. And down here, I can see the how to use the dependencies in Maven and in Gradle. And this goes back to the video that I in the previous video that I mentioned, uh, why I don't like uh, XML a lot because it's very polluted. It's it's everything is in the, is the same, right? It's addressing the same 
content. So you, you can see this in both lines. You can see this in both in both dependencies. You can see this and this. And these are using the scope test. This is the same scope too, right? But in Grader, you can do that in one single line. While in XML, it's a bunch of lines. In that file, it's a POM file. Like POM XML is going to be very big and very polluted. So uh, that's specifically why I don't like it. Uh, so I go, I'm going to go to my build Grader here. And I'm going to put the dependencies here. And it's going to automatically pick it up because I did enable auto import. And now press show is already here. And I'm going to do the same as I did in JUnit. Uh, I'm going to put a plus. So it's going to make sure that's going to keep updated to any four version. All right. And the difference between test implementation and implementation in Gradle, uh, if you if you enter here, you can read the documentation. But the implementation is going to be on the scope of the code and the test implementation, the scope of the test. So in the code that goes to production, it makes no sense to put the dependencies of testing dependencies there because you're not going to be running uh, unit tests on that specific code that's running there. So that's the difference on the scope. So now that we we did that, we, we have the dependencies and we have the what we're going to test. One thing that I would like to mention is do not worry much about creating the perfect code from scratch, right? Uh, make sure that you, you have a working uh, function or a method that it's it's working and you can create a commit and then you can you can, you can improve after that because once you have a few tests already created what's going to happen is it's going to spot patterns you're going to spot spot duplications and it's going to visually be easy for you to figure out what you can improve in and if you see a duplicated line you can hey this is duplicated how can I how can I share this among the uh, among the every everywhere else that is used in that file, so we're going to visually spot those things and and with practice some of those stuff you're going to already start uh, creating in advance and, and dealing already in advance with those. But even when you, you you reach your highest coding level, you're going to once you have visually everything created, you also is going to spot improvements that you didn't see beforehand and you have a lot of stuff going on in your mind right so just make it work and then you can spot and change and reflect right? so the first thing that i'm going to do i'm going to change this test so right so it's going to be public void and i'm going to say test list user metadata metadata and I'm going to use, start using the keyword here, which is when, for rest assured, right? And I can do alt enter to import and already has already imported here, right? I don't need this in this, but already imported the when. And I'm going to put a dot and I'm going to put a dot at the end. And now I'm going to do get in the URL that I'm going to test, which is this one. And it's going to be the, we're going to start with list user, which is this one, right? So it's the whole thing here. And I'm putting a dot to here. And then I'm going to say, this is my action. Now this is my, uh, my assertive or what I'm expecting. Then I should be able to see something, right? Then I should see a status code if we look at here, the contract, it says uh, 200 is the response, and this is the response. So I'm expecting a status code of 200, right? And I can run my test, and I can click here, run test, and it passed, right? Uh, on TDD, uh, test-driven development, you start with a failing test, and then you make it pass, then you make fail again, and then you, you make it pass again. And why this approach? Because you're going to make sure that it's failing for the correct reason, and it's passing for the correct reason. And in here, I started with a passing test, right? But now let's force a failure. So I can actually make sure my test is failing whenever it should fail, so it's failing. 
So one of the reasons why the dot is on the end, this is rest assured uh, syntax, right? And uh, in Java, when you are breaking uh, the same line into different multiple lines, usually the dot is on the left, but rest assured in the documentation show, show this, and this is more readable, right? And both when and then it's what they call synthetic sugar, uh, just to make it more readable. Uh, and it has nothing to do with BDD, right? behavior-driven uh, development. This is more related to, a, I have a setup, which my given, I have a when, which is my action, and I have a then, which is my, my final, my, my, my finals, right? My, my assertive. So what else I want to check? So uh, I asked it for the page two, so I should specifically see the page two, right? So I'm going to put a dot here. And I'm going to say I want a body, and the body is the page, and it should be two, right? And I'm going to import here, and I'm going to use the core matchers. Uh, the core matcher is I, I could use a JUnit equal to right core matchers. Uh, the hemcrest comes from the dependencies on the rest assured. I could use equal to, but but the the idea of Hemcrest is to be more readable, my human readable. So I could say page body equal to, but a human would say page body is to, right? Page body, right? page body is to. Right? The next thing that I can check, this is very specific to APIs, right? So when we, we look at here, um, the API is this is a pagination, right? And when we are we are we have a website and we're paginating visually, we can see very easily the pagination. But then we, we need to tell a machine exactly how to paginate, what and, and and how that works, right? So today's in microservices, big data, you can have a lot of data in that specific JSON file, and that can be overhead on both the in the system creating the data, providing the data in the system consuming that data. So that's why uh, we paginate. And here it's telling, okay, we are on page two. You are page, uh, we are displaying six per page. It's a total of 12 uh, pages, uh, sorry, 12 items. And it's a total of two pages. So now the system consuming that knows exactly what's, how, how many items are there, how many pages and which page that system is. So the next thing that I can check, I can check the per page, right? I can do per page, I can do another body here, and I can do body per page. is six, right? And I can also check the data, right? I want to check the data, so I'm going to do I'm going to go over why these assertions is not very good assertions that I'm doing, but I just want to show initially how you can do it. So I'm, this is, I'm checking the first one. So this is data, uh, this is an array of uh, uh, hash. So I, I want to get the email of the first one. So it's data zero dot email and the email is Michael. Is Michael. The dot, and I'm going to do another dot body data dot name is Michael capital M. Right, I can run my test control command shift control command shift R control shift R is going to execute the test that the cursor is in. And it failed. Why it failed? Because first name, not name, cool, awesome. Now it passed, right? And I would like to go over why this is not a very good test. Uh, I depend on the data, right? And I do not control this data. So there are a few things here you need to spot. One is my per page. Since I do not control it, this is a probably a setup and a configuration 
And since I don't control it, they can change whenever they want. And I, since I don't have control, my test is going to fail for a reason that should not fail. And now I have to go over uh, what's happening and, and figure out for, and I'm going to lose time when I should not have because I have a bad test. So since I do not control the, the data, I'm going to remove it. I, if I control the data, this could be a potential test function, right? I can say uh, if my, my page, my setup is 10, I should display 10. Uh, but this is not the case, so I'm going to remove it, right? The same thing with the data, right? I depend not only on the data of Michael, but I depend on the order, right? So since I'm putting here the order, if I change Lindsay with Michael, just the order, it's still a, the system is still uh, perfect, okay, but my test is going to fail because my, I, I wrote a bad test, right? Again, I do not control the data. So I'm going to just make sure that the data is not no, right? So I'm going to go over here. I'm going to delete, de delete this one, put a, a semicolon here, and I'm going to say just that the data is not new value. And I'm going to run the test. Control R is going to execute the last test, regardless of the cursor. But I do, I want to make sure that this is a failing test, right? So I'm going to put should be a new value. I'm going to run the test and it's going to fail. And it's going to fail because you was expecting new and it became a bunch of data. So this is exactly what I wanted right now, right? Cool. Awesome. Just make sure that it's going to run. Cool. One of the things that I'm going to change here too is uh, is the 200, right? Because there is a HTTP status already available for us in the Apache library, HTTP status. And I can I already have all the status here. So the one that I'm expecting 200 is SC, status code, okay. So it's more readable. Awesome. So I'm going to run my test again. And it passed. Cool. So another thing that I, I just created a get test. So now we need to create a post test, right? So when the one that I'm going to do is uh, create. Right? And one of the things that you should always do is before you test a API, you should, an automated, you, before you do the automation, you should manually test it, right? You don't want to test a already broken API, right? So you don't want to create the, the automation for an already broken API. You want to make sure that it's already working. So I have the contract here, which is uh, slash API slash users. I have a body, which is uh, name Raphael job engineer test. And when I do send, it's doing what's expected. It's 201 created and it's returning me my ID, the timestamp and whatever data I pass on. So let's start with that, right? So now I'm going to do another test. It's public void test. Successfully create a user. My successfully drawn successfully create a user. And this time I'm going to start with a given because I need to say what is my contract. I'm going to import this. Right? And I'm going to say body uh, params. My param is name. This is wrong, right? But I'm, I'm going to show you how you can debug. Uh, Raphael and params uh, job engineer test when now I do my when instead of a get now I'm going to do a post this is what we want we want to do a post I do a post there we go and now 
when I do a post to where, right? I did a post to here, to this URL, URI, and then I'm going to do, then what do I expect when I do that post? And one of the things that I do expect is I do expect the status code to be 201, which is this one, created. We're going to see here 201 created. And I expect the body to have name is profile. But one thing that I just forgot is I should have committed this. I created a commit, I created a test and I did not commit, which is not correct, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a branch. Uh, I'm actually going to commit on the mass and then I create a branch. So if I do git status, git status, I do have some stuff here. I do get git, I do git add dash p so I can see everything. This is my uh, dependencies. This is the timestamp of the of the Gradle. I'm not going to commit here. And I do have this one. I don't want to commit the one the test that I'm still doing, so I'm not going to do this. I'm going to remove this for a second. Uh, let's put the timestamp and then my test. Now I'm going to git commit dash m for messaging and say add rest assure dependency and list user test. Awesome. So now I'm going to add my test back and I'm going to execute. Right? Control Shift R and it failed. And it failed and I'm going to check here but said uh, 415 and I was expecting 201, but it was 415. The log doesn't tell me much, but I can check what is 415, right? And if I go into the HTTP status and I click here and I enter that, I can do uh, 415 and it, it's unsupported media type, right? And these are my media types. I have all of these media types including this one, right? And I didn't set those here, right? But another thing that I can do is how can I see the log? I can do log, a better log, dot all. And now when I run my test, it's going to be more verbal. It's going to actually show me the header. It's going to show me more information that I can leverage and I can use here. So one of the things, the body is not here but the request params is here. And the request params goes into the URI, right right here. And I, uh, this is how I should be using the params for this kind of request, not for the quest of the body. The request for the body should be in the body. And it, I don't have any body here, right? So what I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to copy this and I'm going to remove the param params and I'm going to put body and I'm going to put a uh, column, double columns, and I'm going to paste it. And since because I already I put a strings, it's going to escape all the, the double columns there, right? And now if I execute, still going to fail, right? And one of the things that it doesn't say much here in the log, but if I look at the headers, it's saying content type is text slash plain. And what I need is I need JSON, right? So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to say, I want the content type to be content type JSON. I re-execute here and now, I have a passing test. So is it really passing? Let me remove uh, one of the assertions. And it's now failing because uh, I was expecting Rafael and it came Rafael. Right. So now I have a passing test, right? And 
one of the things that we we can improve here is this logo because I'm logging this, but I'm not logging this. So if there are any issues here, I'm not going to see it and it's going to take me some time and then uh, I'm going to lose time. If this was already there on my logs, it would be straightforward right for me. More straightforward, not necessarily I would figure out, but it would help me out, right? So one of the things that I learned in a presentation from Elias Nogueira is in Portuguese, uh, but I think he has another presentation that he did in Denmark uh, that he showed these two. I'm going to post the link on that presentation uh, here. You're going to see here in the notification in the channel, and I'm putting the description as well. But then it's I can remove this, and I can put a configuration on the classifier. Right, so I can do. I'm going to use before class and I'm going to say public void setup. This is not okay because uh, before class needs to be static. Here, IntelliJ is complaining, it's not telling me why. Uh, it's incorrect annotation, signature, but then it's because of the static. If I use the static, then it, it's fine. So what I'm going to say is rest assured dot enable logging logging of request and response if validation fails so i'm going to choose that one and now i have a whole class setup right why i use before class and not before before would have executed in every in every test and i don't need that i just need i just need to be executed before the class start before them once for the class, I don't need to execute for each test. I just need to execute before the test starts and it's fine. So now let me force the failure here again. And you're going to see that it displayed all the same information here, which is great. And now I have for all my class, all my tests. I don't need to be putting in every single one of them. So now I have a test working fine. I can do now is git add dash p. I want the dependencies, the imports, and I want the setup, and I want my test. Perfect. So now I'm going to do git commit dash m create test for uh, creating the user. Awesome. Cool. I'm going to create a branch. And this this is git branch git checkout dash b uh, English since this is a English version uh, two which is the say the second video and I'm going to say uh, create first create first rest assured. Tests. Now I'm going to do git push origin in the branch that I want to push. And it's already there. This is what I wanted to show you folks. Thank you for watching this far. If uh, in the next videos, we're going to be uh, starting from what we still can improve here. If I take a look here, I still can improve a lot, right? So this body, this is not okay. This is hard to read. Uh, and this is a very small JSON. It could be a bigger one and it would be pretty much impossible for me to do it like this. So I can improve this a lot. Uh, I can improve, uh, I can, this one is also going to be duplicated. You can see that I'm already duplicating the URI here and here. And um, it's going to be duplicated. I already can see that it's going to be duplicated for every single test that I create. And I do not want to do that, right? Because specifically, I need to be flexible here. If I if the the URI changes, if now this is so, let's say this is production, and now I'm going to want to test my, use my test on on a, my pipeline. My pipeline is not does not run on production. It's going to run on a dev environment, on a stage environment, whatever environment you have. So you need to have you need to be flexible to for those changes for the, those kind of environment changes. Also, the API here, the API could have a different version, and I would like to te test the next version. It's not flexible here whatsoever. My test is going to fail. My, I cannot reuse my test. 
So there are a lot of stuff that we can improve here for this test to be easy, easier to change and easier to maintain. And that's where we're going to start the next video. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, please do so, so you can see the not receive the notifications of the next videos. Uh, if you like it, give the thumbs up. And if you have any comments or any suggestions or anything that you would like me to, to talk about, I can definitely, please put a comment and I can definitely go over those. And thank you for watching.